The Poison of Polygamy is an incredible saga. It's a story of morality. It's a story of betrayal. It's a story about the challenges of migration. It's this really deliciously rollicking saga about the gold fields and what it meant to be in the early days of Melbourne's Chinatown. Yes, that is part of our origin story, but what did that lead to and how does that pervade today? It's completely surreal. So my first production that I did at La Boite was Single Asian Female back in 2017. As an actor, I felt like I was a part of a project that meant so much, not only to us as a, as, as a cast and as a company, but it meant so much to the people coming in and seeing it, and not just Chinese Australian audience members. Anyone who had a family dynamic and resonated with the arguments. People find it confusing when you mix languages. They don't think that it's funny. It's not supposed to be funny. It's <laughs> my culture. I can't remember who I was saying it to. I think I was just saying it to the universe. And I said, I would love to be the artistic director of this company one day. I want to be a part of this all the time. I want to make space for voices and people who have been historically marginalised or maybe haven't had the opportunity or the platform to really tell their story and be represented in an authentic way. Might not you cry out that Chinese polygamy, wherein we share the burden of our desires, is the more sensible system? It's intriguing to witness yeah. the different ways in which he loses control, if that yeah. makes sense. Taking on this role and this being the first production of my tenure here at La Boite, I'm definitely interested in working on work that highlights the diasporic experience, because that's my experience. Make every single person hear every single point and aspect of your argument. The Poison of Polygamy has a kind of remarkable origin story. It was this serialized novella that was published over the course of a year from 1909 to 1910 in 53 installments in this newspaper called the Chinese Times, which was a Chinese language newspaper in Melbourne. And it's quite interesting because Wang Shiping was very much writing in line with his own politics. He was a Christian preacher and then ended up being a political organizer, actually. So it's a sort of remarkably Christian, westernized treatise about the perils of polygamy as it was practiced in China. And then it kind of languished in obscurity for basically a century until some academics discovered it in 2019 when Eli Finch published this really extraordinary English translation of the novel. He was wild, you know, it's so stereotypical when you think about like, oh, you know, this Chinese writer from long ago and you think it's going to be, I don't know, there could be stereotypes of it being quite boring in some ways, but the book is wild. Polygamy ends up sort of opening the door in the novel to a discussion of how should we live as citizens of these two cultures. Working with Anjali Felicia King is amazing. You know, in awe of her craft as a playwright, she's one of the most incredible, urgent voices I think we have in the country. Hopefully what you'll see on stage is Anjali in conversation with Wong Shi Ping. That a man without belief is a man with no constraints. And without constraints, man will pursue every pleasure that avails itself to him, no matter how piteous, or poisonous. We have an incredible cast working on The Poison of Polygamy. They are multi-talented, agile. It is a kind of virtuosic feat and it's a true ensemble. You know, it's a story about the Chinese diaspora of then told by the Chinese diaspora of now and kind of looking at how the different intersections of identity within each of our individual cast members just adds texture and layers to the storytelling and the lives of the characters that we're trying to bring to life. This is the bit here also that I always yeah. cut you off. Oh, no, no, because... that's okay. And I'm very no, aggressive. Of black <laughs> no, 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 no. I think we are still at a period of transformation in the arts in terms of representation. It is a fantastic thing to be 
a part of this particular ensemble. Certainly some of the stuff shares similarities with people's lived histories or the histories of their families. It's wonderful. We have a shared history, but we also have a very diverse history. Like, I was born in Singapore, and then you know that people whose parents are born in Singapore as well, in China and Taiwan, and it's this beautiful diaspora that gets to come together and make work, you know, it's pretty magical. <laughs> he also succumbed to temptation. Yeah. And so we need to see that that exists within this personality. Yeah, right. I don't know that I've seen a story on our stage where the Asian characters are allowed to be as flawed and as messy as their white counterparts that exist within the Australian canon. This play also looks at how Chinese Australians were part of colonisation. And that has to mean something for the community now and the way in which we tell stories now. Should we not all take a hundred lovers? Why should we restrict our devotions to the one true God? As soon as you start to shed light on the individual circumstances and the real human stories and like show these people as human beings, it kind of puts you in a different space to interrogate. Yeah. Yeah. Part of my project with adapting this novel is interrupting the idea of the classics in the theatre in this country so that we stop looking to the same dead white men and we start staging stories that speak to our more globalised society. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. If the audience leave wanting to be at the theatre more, wanting to leave their homes, go out, sit in an audience with people who have different perspectives than them, participate in storytelling, then I think we've done a good job. Yeah.